What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. I hope everybody's having a great day. All right, guys, I want to talk about Israel's mission to the moon, also known as the Bereshit uh, spacecraft. Uh, I want you guys to see this. This is pretty cool. I'm going to go over briefly how, you know, when it launched, what happened to it, why it crashed, or it failed, the mission failed. And then I want to get into a photo that may actually have a couple of small, well, they look small, but they're, in reality, they're big anomalies on the moon, right? So let's get started with that. Okay, better sheet to launch tonight, propelling Israel to the moon. And of course, this is February 21st. Now, they claimed that it took about, I think it was around about a month, the whole mission. So, and it was actually two weeks for it get from Earth to the moon, because what it was doing is it, was, it would make several orbits around the Earth, and every time it made an orbit, it made it more of an elliptical towards the moon until it actually got to the moon. Uh, <clears throat> because they didn't, I guess they were trying to save fuel and just slingshot from the Earth to the moon, right? And, of course, you can see right here the Jerusalem Post. Uh, here's the spacecraft here. Uh, it says right here, better sheet is uh, loaded on its launcher, Falcon 9, before it's launched into space Thursday night. So, anyway, it says... Uh, Israel will take its first step to the moon late Thursday night as the lunar spacecraft battle sheet launches from the coast of Cape Canaveral in a mission that, if successful, will place a uh, Jewish state in the exclusive club of nations capable of landing on the lunar surface. Now, keep in mind, that would have been the fourth uh, country to do that, right? Because we had the Soviet Union, United States, China, and then it would have been Israeli spacecraft would have been the actual fourth. So, okay, so what happened, right? So now you got right here, Israel spacecraft crashes in final moments before the moon landing, which was on the 11th of April, I believe. Um, so you, you go, well, what happened, man? And it's, it's just like it was privately funded, which is awesome, right? Um, and uh, had to do with the, uh, what was it, that grand prize that they had, like all of these nations could get together and uh, come up with their own mission and spacecraft and everything else. And whoever basically won this award would get paid X amount of dollars. I don't know if it was like $20 million or whatever it was. And, of course, this spacecraft cost uh, $100 million, and it says the $100 million spacecraft built by Space IL and Israel Aerospace Industries lost communications with the control room in Israel during the landing sequence. As program managers who had been watching the mission in real time tried to reestablish communications, they also dealt with issues with the spacecraft's main engine. And so, so what happened? Well, basically, they said it was a fault by a manual uh, input of information uh, into the spacecraft that might have triggered off these uh, the main engine quitting and then all the others around it uh, actually failing, and that's what caused it to crash. Now, they did say this was the last photo. Uh, this is the last uh, photo Israel's Barashid, uh moon lander ever took, uh, when in fact it was not. You know, they claim right here, this, and it says it right here, and you say Israel to the moon. This is their page, uh, and it's right here on Twitter. Um, but then the guy asked the question. He goes, um, not this one. Now, this one here, you can see it's 15 kilometers from the surface of the moon, where this one here was much lower before it crashed. And this is the photo that I actually analyzed in Photoshop, uh, because this is where it's a lot lower to the ground. And you could see, you know, like off in the distance here, it always, it, you always see these flat areas. But when you look closely, there's actually more of a 3D and something that's raised up. Now, the couple items that I see, they, they don't look very big because they're off in the distance, but they, they appear to be quite large. Right? All right, so let's get into that. Oh, and by the way, th let's backtrack a little bit. NASA was working with them. So again, they're bedfellows. And it actually had more than just one sole you know, purpose. Right? And one of them was to, to land in Sea of Serenity. Uh, how does that sound for me? Well, that's because the Apollo 17 landed there. Right? And that mission went on from December 7th to the 19th in 1972. Yet they were going to send it down in the southernmost tip of uh, Sea of Serenity um, to m actually measure the magnetic field as well as just take high-definition photos. And I'm thinking to myself, what's the purpose in that, right? Okay. So with that in mind, uh, now they're going to use the LRO to try to find the crash. And, they, and what they did was they had this experiment on board, and I'm not sure they put that in case it failed. But I call it the disco ball. It's supposed to be at the very top of the spacecraft. And uh, what they're going to do is, is the, uh, use the laser a laser from the LRO to just kind of go over the land and it'll reflect back and they'll know exactly where this thing's at. Anyway, this is the photo I looked at. And of course, it shows right here what was the spacecraft supposed to do on the moon. Its first job was to use its high-resolution cameras to take some photos, including a selfie, which it did manage before the crash, which was this photo right here. And you can see that. You can see the moon in the distance and you can see the craft itself. And you can see it right here, small country, big dreams. 
Um, so that was pretty cool. And then it says it was then going to measure the magnetic field of the spot it landed in, an area known as Mare Serenitatis or Sea of Serenity, right? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I find it kind of odd. That's all they were going up there for. doesn't really make much sense, but that's beside the point. This is, again, this is the photo I, I enhanced. Let's have a look. All right, so right here, right off the bat, guys, I'm looking at this and I'm going, every time I see something like this, I just go, what? You can just see right here, it's been manipulated right here. It looks like something's been covered over. Let's put it that way. Move along to the right. You go right here and there's something else in this area right here. You can see something right here doing this. Going like this and then down, a separation. Something else going like this. And there's something else here I couldn't really make out, but it's doing this here. I don't know if you guys can see this. You'll see it so much better in a minute. But it's weird. I'm not sure if there's two separate pieces there. If it's one piece, can't be sure, right? Um, but you guys will be able to tell me what you think. Right here, you have this weird, at least it looks to me, is this object that does this. Of course, that's not very rounded or smooth, but... You got this little black piece right here and one much larger right here. You guys see that? Right there. And then you've got this other, I'm not sure what to make of this. But my biggest focus was over here. And you're going to see that right now. All right, so as I started to enhance this, going over it, see if I can find anything of any value. I'm going to zoom into that area. So basically what I was trying to do is make anything that was doctored to, to pop out. Try to see if we can get more of a 3D kind of thing going on, right? Or, or at least get a three-dimensional something. Instead of being 2D, we want to get it like more of a 3D, right? All right, so right off the bat, I started to see this right here. Looks like something like this. Something on top of it right here. And I saw this right here. Whatever this thing is, it appears to almost be like it was broken apart into the actual lunar surface. I, I really don't know what to make of it, but let's get into it a little bit more. And this is what I ended up with. I'm going to back out so you can see the overall, because here's the other piece I was telling you about. Right there. See that? Right there. And, of course, we have these objects here. Let's back back out. I want you guys to see this. I got rid of any color, so we don't have any kind of, you know, distortion as far as color-wise. I wanted it simply black and white. And this is what we ended up with. I'm not sure what to make of this stuff. Not sure if it's a structure. Not sure if it's a uh, vehicle of some sort, some kind of craft. Uh, you guys could be the judge. It, and clearly, this is not natural, right? It's not a crater. It's something that's sticking out. And, of course, I'm going to back up a little bit so you guys can see this the way I enhanced it. And you can see that thing right there. And just by docketing up this to try to see if we can find this and, and then bring out any kind of white details is what I did after. And you can just go right here and use the dodge tool and just go over the whole thing like this here. And anything that has a white signature will start to pop. And that's what I started to notice these things sticking out. And I couldn't make out what this was right here. It's completely distorted out. But there's something there on that part of that surface of the moon. And that's the only thing I could pretty much drag out here was this here. Of course, you've got this other piece I was telling you guys about. Now, that to me, come on, man. Really? That doesn't look natural at all when you get this small, almost perfect circle. Large one, almost perfect circle. Of course, I'm not making that perfectly. And then you got what looks like it does this. Kind of thing. And, of course, I distorted the heck out of that. But you guys can see that better right there. See that? There's something right here. You can see where it's actually, you can see this right here coming straight out. This to me was like, wow. You got this area in front that looks like it's oval and it's been darkened out, or it's just because it's just a shadowing of it. And then if you notice right here in the back from here over, it looks like they just try to fudge it out to get rid of it. Again, these guys are working, these guys are bedfellows with NASA. So, yeah, I mean, they these you could tell these weren't, like, right away. In other words, these photos weren't instamatic. They didn't come down and say, by the way, public, here you go. These were worked, okay? Now, it doesn't take these guys long, especially if you're a professional at this, to actually take this stuff and manipulate it out, right? It wouldn't take you nothing to do this, because if there's only a several things in this photo, then this could be r done rather quickly, 
and that's pretty much it. Let me give you an overall. That's the photo itself. So whatever these things are, a way back, is it possible some kind of botched up, you know, mission in the past? Um, was it something that was sitting here on this on this lunar surface all this time, and they just wanted to go and take their look at it? Again, this is right around the southern edge of the of Serenity, you know, right where the Apollo uh, 17 mission was. Of course, they were more north of this area, but still, nonetheless. And we've seen some crazy things in the Apollo 17 photos, right? So, but guys, I'll tell you why this is so important, too, is that... Uh, the next video I got coming up is not so much an anomaly video, but an informative video and how these countries are working together. What we are doing right now in our life, this is nothing. We are part of something much, much larger and it's going to blow your mind. Some people may actually get a little weird about it, like, wow, this is kind of weirding me out a little bit. But wait until you see that because it's cool. And guys, when I seen it, I was just like totally blown away when you read this document, these couple of these documents I'm going to show you guys. And I'm going to read some of this stuff to you. It's just going to be mind-blowing because you're going to go, wow. Because when you think about what you do in your everyday life, and then what could be possibly going on in the world and outside of it, yeah. And you'll see what I mean. I'm going to put all of this together for you guys. It's it's, it's pretty mind-blowing, but you're going to see that in uh, next video, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, guys, throw your comments down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on what we've seen here in this uh, uh, battle sheet uh, last photo. As far as I'm concerned, that's the last photo. Uh, it was closer to the lunar surface, so therefore, there you go, right? You know, and guys, like and share the video. I'm always appreciative of that. Stay tuned for that next video because I don't, I'm not sure. I'm going to try to compile this thing together, put it together for you guys so I don't have to make it super long. But yet, it's going to be very informative. And like I said, it's going to give you a whole new way of thinking about who we are on this planet and what's really going on. Anyway, guys, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. But anyway, with that, I'm going to let you guys rock and roll and let you guys go. Have yourselves a great day. And I'll see you in the next one.